the memories at the moment are just as clear as they were then. The only points I can't remember are the moments of either elation or fear. Dream took us to places you couldn't even imagine. There we were going to entry for probably the greatest race on the planet. We actually broke the mold we actually went there and did it. And did it for a tenner a week. It's elation when you can do something, particularly when no one gives you a chance. We were a tight-knit community at one time, as most mining communities are. The majority of people in the village were either in the pit or connected to the, the coal industry. There was Bargard Colliery, there was Elliottstown, there was Britannia, there was Oakdale. And one by one, they've closed down. I was a barmaid at the Working Men's Club on Bidwelty Road. I used to work for the Old Time Dancing, so I hadn't been in the bar that much. It was a Thursday. Jan was working, um, bar manager. I didn't know her by name even, and she'd been there a few months. And I listened to him a few times in the bar on about some racehorse, you know, they'd had a racehorse and what have you. And I kept listening and listening to him on about this horse. I said to the steward, who's that? And he said, oh, that's Howard. He said they had a racehorse, he said, a few of them a few years ago, he said, but they lost a lot of money, he said. So I thought about it, now I've got my head around it, done a little bit of research, and I thought I like the sound of that. So I ordered the drinks, and she paused and said to me, you're Howard. And I said, um, I am. And she said, I'm going to breed a racehorse. So I picked the pints up and said, good luck and sat down. Well, John had come home from the club oh, about 12 o'clock in the night. She said, I wanted to buy me a thoroughbred mare. I said, what for? She said, I'm going to breed a racehorse. I said, don't talk bloody stupid. Well, you know, and uh, she said, I am. Shut up, you silly bugger. He said, you can't breed a bloody racehorse. I said, yes, we can. We, you know, and I was telling him then how Howard, how they'd had this horse. I, I omitted to tell him that they'd lost a lot of money, mind. Howard came home one night and said, oh, I've just met someone, it's, it's the barmaid at, at the pub, um, who's asked me about uh, breeding horses. And she said, Yo, you, you've run a syndicate before. Could you help me out with it? When I did it in the previous decade, I had the good fortune to fall upon a trainer who wanted tax advice. And as I'm a tax advisor, um, I had an opportunity. And although the horse won a couple of races, in terms of finances, it was pretty disastrous. It was about £5,000 of, of debt to sort out at the end. And uh, Howard said, well, we, you, we won't do that again. And I said, you're right, we certainly won't be doing that again. I was not pleased. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it's purely the simple fact that racing itself is an exclusive, expensive hobby. The hardest part is you don't know where to start. I mean, you could spend, as the Maktoums have spent, billions, literally billions, on trying to win the derby and failed. And so, for us to even contemplate starting from scratch, buying a brood mare, and then finding a stallion, well, it was an impossible ask. You don't uh, doubt Janet. <laughs> no, when she says she's going to do something, she'd do it. And that's how it all started. Janet's dream it was. When I was a very young child, my father used to breed show budgery cars. It was fascinating, even at that young age, to see what different colours, you know, and different things that you could get out of. He would be breeding for a deeper chest or a longer tail, and you'd see how many different crosses he made. It sticks with you. I know it sounds daft, but it sticks with you from a young age. Then we went on to racing pigeons. And I came out on my first race and won a Welsh national. As I got older, I bred with pets. We showed everywhere from Scotland down to Land's End. Rosettes, caps, wonderful fun with the whippets. I knew nothing whatsoever about racing as such, but I did know that um, these sort of people, these well-to-do well sort of people, like to keep their uh, sports to themselves. They like to keep us commoners out, I think.